In 2005, a Bugatti Veyron went 253.1 miles per hour, breaking the current record for a production car. Unfortunately, what they didn't know is a Corvette had done it back in 1988. Hey everybody, welcome back to Car Side Chat. I'm your host, Primo, and today we're gonna to be talking about a very interesting vehicle that did something really incredible a long time ago. That is the 1988 Callaway Sledgehammer Corvette. It was based off of a C4 Corvette, and it was able to make an astounding amount of speed back in 1988, just when nobody else was going anywhere near that fast, and it would be a long time before anybody else even tried to compare against it. What is weird about this vehicle is it's not very well known. I don't think it's something that people talk about as much, and it's something that we like to bring attention to, to kind of bring you back to a time when things Things were a lot different when it came to at least Corvettes and uh, we're going to go over that right now but first I want to make sure that you like and subscribe make sure you hit the bell icon uh, we're going to get into that review right now so before we get into talking about the sledgehammer, I think it's important to understand where Corvette was at the time. Back in the 80s, a gas problem had occurred and a lot of vehicles and new legislation had prevented them from making a sub subsequent amount of power. So the Corvette itself was very underpowered at the time. In 1983, the 5.7 liter V8 made only 205 horsepower, which is almost a sparse number. I can't believe that they'd even want to produce a vehicle like that with the Corvette title on it uh, but that was the way that they had to make it and it also had a crossfire ignition system that was prone to failure that was actually renamed the misfire uh, so there was a lot of problems that the Corvette was going through so when the idea of Callaway coming out with a new production vehicle for the Corvette something that was gonna break numbers it was a really cool idea and something it was a very exciting project that I think a lot of people would get on board with if they actually knew about it. So the first thing they did was take a 1988 C4 Corvette and they begin to work on the vehicle to make as much power as possible so they twin turbo the 5.7 liter then they commissioned Paul Deutschman to work on the aero of the vehicle the big thing about a vehicle that's going to make any kind of power or any kind of top speed it's going to have to be able to move air around the vehicle be both aerodynamic and be able to move air into the engine so it was a great deal of things that they did to this vehicle to make it up to speed so that it would be able to reach the towering speed that they wanted to make and Callaway had said from the get-go that he wanted 250 plus miles per hour I even think that he said 253 so they kind of knew exactly where they wanted to land when they got done with the vehicle the other big thing that they wanted about this vehicle was that they wanted to be a streetable vehicle they wanted it to be a Corvette that had AC that it had a radio that it was an actual working vehicle something that somebody but he could take down the street, go pick up groceries, and then go to the track and do a crazy amount of speed on it. So it was a very interesting way they were going to deal with this car and they ended up putting in a roll cage and other than that and doing obviously the body work and any of the engine work other than that internally if you sat in it you wouldn't know much of a difference between a regular Corvette and the Corvette that was going to be doing this massive amount of speed so all said and done after everyone had put all their emphasis into this car and did everything that they need they finally ended up with horsepower numbers of 898 horsepower with 770 72 foot pounds of torque which is really impressive one other problem they had was obviously the tires that were on the vehicle would not be able to withstand the types of speed that they were going to produce so Goodyear spent I believe it's a million dollars to put into this vehicle so that they could make specific tires that not only fit the tires that were on the vehicle itself but they wanted them to match the production vehicle perfectly so that way what was on the vehicle looked no different than the tires that would come from the manufacturer so if you bought the vehicle this is exactly how it would look so it was very cool and very sneaky of them and I don't believe that was the information that they kind of gave out to people so then they loaded up the car and drove 1400 miles from Connecticut 
all the way to the TRC Proven Grounds in Ohio, switched out the tires there, and then gave the wheel to John Lingenfelter, who was going to be setting the record that day. One thing I think is very cool about this vehicle was when they're working on it in the paddock, a lot of the people that were coming around seeing them prep for it didn't realize how fast the vehicle could go. Uh, they had told people that they were looking for that 253 mile per hour mark and the second that they said it people kind of walked away and kind of scoffed at them. So when they did their first run the people running the track had looked over and said that was a really great run I guess you're done for the day and they were like no we have a lot more coming out of this car which is why they asked you know wait how much more can this car make and you started learning very quickly how much they wanted to go for and they left the track open for the guys to do it and on October 26 of 1988 they set a record of 254.76 miles per hour when they finally made that last ditch top speed that was really as fast as the car could go and to be honest that is a very very exceptional number John Lingenfelter had gotten out of the vehicle gotten into his car to drive home and he looked over at Callaway and said you know what your Corvette is a hundred miles per hour faster than mine so that really puts it in context I mean, today people kind of see these numbers and they don't realize how impressive those numbers were. To put it in context at the time, the best Lamborghini could do with their Countach was 189 miles per hour and they had set the record of the time. That wouldn't be bested until 1993 with the McLaren and McLaren would only do 221 miles per hour. It wouldn't be until 2005 with a Bugatti Veyron that it would hit 253.1 miles per hour and even then it hadn't eclipsed what the Callaway sledgehammer had done way back in 1988. It wouldn't be until 2007 with the SSC Arrow that hit 256 miles per hour that it truly would leave the sledgehammer in the dust. And even then, it didn't beat it by much. So I highly doubt that the sledgehammer really changed much when it came to the popularity of the Corvette. By 1991, it had already gotten its legs back and was already making power and trying to make a huge comeback, which it did throughout the 90s and finally I think found its stride in the 2009 Corvette. Now that the vehicle is mid-engine it actually takes on vehicles far superior than itself and does a very good with being able to compete on their level even sometimes with way less horsepower than them and with an exceptional price tag for what it makes for power. Today Corvette owners still argue are they a supercar but if we're really going to think about the Corvette today, it's important not to forget where the Corvette came from. That measly 205 horsepower of 1983, which turned into 898 at 254 miles per hour. A C4 that went from humble beginnings to greatness. So I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, look back in the past on the Callaway Sledgehammer Corvette. It's personally one of my favorite vehicles. I love it. I think that people just underestimate how cool this car is. Uh, it sold at the last auction, I believe, at $400,000. Uh, at a later time, they were looking for more money for it. I think it was like $600,000 that they wanted for the vehicle, but I don't know if it sold at auction. We probably do want to do some research down the road. If anybody knows about that, please put it in the comments. I'd like to know a little bit about what happened to it after the fact. Unfortunately, the vehicle was made illegal for road use. Uh, no indication of why that was or if anybody at some point planned to make the vehicle legal for the road. I, in the end, it's just a very cool car. Uh, and like I said, it withstood the test of time for so long. It's just amazing to see that so few people know about it. So I hope you, get, you like this blast from the past. I hope you'll continue to like, subscribe, leave comments. Do what you got to do because we're going to keep bringing stuff to you. It's been great today. Uh, this has been your host, Primo. I am signing off now, and we'll see you next time. As always, guys, don't forget to drive.